Welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about Ricky Nixon, a man who has had tremendous highs and very painful lows. And I think this goal sums up his career in a nutshell. Out of the middle. It goes past Hudson. A chance for Nixon. It sits up well. He took a step too many as bowled over. He regains his footing and kicks the goal. This is a so let's take a look at Ricky Nixon and some of his scandals that happened over the years. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you already know who he is and what he's done in the past. He's the sports agent, played AFL for Hawthorne and St Kilda, and then had a few scandals along the way. That's what we're going to discuss today. Um, people would be surprised to know that my biggest client back in 2007, I think it was, or eight, was Clinton Gribus, who was a young and up-and-coming um, talent in the media. He came to me. Clinton Gribus was a great commentator, and it was a sad day when he actually passed away. From my understanding, he was in his apartment, he was sleepwalking a lot, and hit his head on a table and ended up dying. Um, and I think that's one thing that sent Ricky Nixon off the rails. So he's been feeling like he's giving it his all and people aren't respecting him, and this was the start of the spiral. Um, I just felt that here I was busting my balls for players and, and girlfriends and families and everybody around town seven days a week and like they're just doing my head in. And I drove to the office um, that this day I can remember it as clear as anything and I just drove straight past. And I went down to Point Lonsdale where I had a holiday house and I just locked the door and I stayed there for four or five days and that was the start of the downhill. Do you think that you were actually cooked at that point? That this no. Is, no. No, I, look, no, Mike, that was the start of it. I'd never been a big drinker. I'd never taken drugs in my life um, uh -huh. up until I got into my 40s, um, which would surprise... That's, yeah, would surprise people. It's exactly the same thing that happened to Wayne Carey. He was supposedly anti-drug for a lot of years as well, and then when he retired, didn't know what to do with himself uh, and ended up becoming a bit of a drug addict and glassing his girlfriend. So now he's going to talk about wanting to commit suicide on the Thames Bridge in England. Well, it was twice I, w I was dead. Once and twice I probably probably was seconds off being dead. Tell um, us about those situations. When the hotel incident happened... Um, this is uh, with the so-called St Kilda yeah, schoolgirl, correct? Once again, contrary to what's reported in the media, that I fled the country and everything, I was already going to Ireland. I go to Ireland every late February to look at the talent. They play um, university games over there. So I thought I'm, I'm going to... I don't think he fled the country deliberately, but it is convenient timing to go overseas. I mean... Yeah, he was going overseas, but it is very convenient at that time. Go, get out of here and try and sort this out in my head. But, you know, I was, I was bamboozled by what had happened a lot because I was drugged in a hotel room. And I didn't you, know... You were not. what, self-administered or, or inflicted upon you? Inflicted upon me. And I have evidence to support that now. Um, and I went So, overseas. maybe for real, this is the night when that infamous... So it's easy to say that he was drugged, and yes, no doubt people have exploited him and tried to drug him up and take advantage of him and make money off this and do interviews and damage his reputation, yes. But you are a married man, and you're dealing with a St Kilda schoolgirl who's very young and having a rendezvous with her at a hotel. So that's why a lot of people don't see you as a very nice person, regardless of whether you were taken advantage of or not picture was taken that correct. appeared in the Herald Sun, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, so and the Herald Sun are scumbag, so they don't care. You got on a plane and to get to Ireland, you've got to go through um, the UK or through London, Heathrow. When I got there, a good friend of mine, Matt Tripp and Paul Stokey, um, who have been very good to me through this period, uh, basically said, stay here, don't go to Ireland, the media will be there. So unfortunately for me, they, uh, they left the next day, they were there on business and um, that was 10 days of an absolute blur. Um, I took a drug that uh, I'm not going to go into what and how and everything else. Coke. It doesn't serve any purpose. This is we're in London when you took this yep. drug. Yep. And, Cocaine. Um, I'd never taken a lot of it before that, but I took a lot of it in the next 10 days. Well, I've got to ask, you know I've got to ask you this. Was it cocaine? Um, it might have been, yeah. Okay, so you took the drug. Yep. Yep. And, um, you know, my wife and everyone was very concerned and my staff. Uh, at one stage, the hotel had to break the door down to see if I was alive. Um, and one night... Well, yeah, because you went missing for several days. I was in such a state about what had happened and what I'd done to my family and what the media had written and said and just were making it up, essentially, because they had no fodder from me, that I, uh, I... Let that be a lesson to you as well. If somebody is talking shit about you, especially in the media, you have to defend yourself and you have to come out with a statement. Otherwise, they will say whatever they like, unchecked. 
I walked out onto the Thames across a bridge and I stood on it and I was going to jump. And, and I, it's happened to me twice. My wife saved my life. She, um, she rang. And I was looking down... Just by chance? Well, chance, I suppose, yes. It, it wasn't... It, what chance, I suppose? If someone saw you walk on the bridge or someone knew that you were going to do it, surely. What are the odds of her calling at that time? Like it was planned. She'd been ringing me for days, but I hadn't answered. Mm. I don't know why I answered that night. Was, it, was this a drug-induced stupor for 10 days, was it? I think it was everything. It, was, it wasn't much alcohol. It was a drug-induced stupor, but it was more a breakdown. I was mm. at the point where I was actually totally broken person. And when I looked down, and this will haunt me for the rest of my life, when I looked down at the water and I was about to jump, my two sons, Lewis and Mitch, are looking up at me saying, wow. don't do it. And I just said I got... That's a very dramatic story, which a lot of people say when they go through tough things. They always think of their kids. It's very convenient. And it's a very way to pull the heartstrings. I'm not saying he wasn't in a bad state and things like that. And he probably was thinking of his children. I just think it's a very convenient story to tell people. I've got to go. I've got to go. And um, she, she rang and I said, I was like this. So you're on the bridge? I was on the bridge and I said, what do you want? Stop ringing me, you know, sort of thing. And she's like... You're going to get a phone call from Rod Butters in a minute. You bloody answer it on behalf of your kids. You just do Rod Butters of all people, the drug addict who ran St Kilda into the ground. Do it. And she hung up. And I'm like... And I just... Before I knew it, the phone was ringing. It was Rod Butters. And I knew Rod, not well, but knew him. And... Um, Rod Butters is the former St former Kilda, St. Kilda president. president. And, you know, what was said between Rod and I, I really can't remember greatly. All I do know is Rod talked me off the bridge. And he talked me into getting back on a plane and coming back to Australia. Did, and he, when, know, did he know what your mental state was at the time? Oh, I think he just, he just probably guessed. And, he, and I believe he'd spoken to people at the AFL, perhaps even at the highest level, about trying to help me. Because everyone knew I was in a, in a very delicate situation. Mm. I don't think anyone knew I was standing on a bridge about to jump. Mm. Um, and to get on that plane the next day... So basically he feels like the average St Kilda supporter has felt their whole lives. <laughs> And now let's get into the St Kilda schoolgirl incident. Is that, is I think that it's balanced? fair that the public know that, you know, to pay a female $250,000 who's under that? the age of 20, several media outlets, two in particular. TV networks. Yeah. To I don't think anyone's going to dispute the Herald Sun and TV networks are a bunch of scumbags. I think we'd all agree on that. Lie, and who was found to be a pathological liar. Um, he just said she was a pathological liar, the schoolgirl. Remember, this girl is under 20, this man is married, and he's supposed to be the adult in this relationship, okay? You can't just blame it all on her. Like, you're the one who's initiating this and taking advantage of a girl who's barely an adult. So, you're in the wrong, bro. Like, yes, they may have set you up, but you walked right into it. At the end of the day, I look at it like this. I'm not going to give any more attention to someone like that. Um, I went to a hotel room and I shouldn't have. There's only one person to blame and that's... He didn't just do that, by the way. He's about to say this, but he hooked up with her at his beach house the first time and she knocked on his door and he didn't just go, oh, fuck off, bitch. He let her come over and stay in his bed. She also got naked for him at his office. Okay, I've read about this in his book, so he's going to omit some of this. And now he's gone and seen her again in the hotel room. That's not one mistake. That is like several mistakes and he'll blame it on the drugs and say, oh, I was in a stupor and all this sort of stuff. Didn't know what I was doing. I was ashamed of my family. I knew it was coming and all that. It's just a series of bad decisions. Me. I Can I ask you why there. you went there though? Good question. Um, a person two weeks before that had had a, um, had claimed to have a uh, drug overdose. It was proven she was found in a reception of a hotel and taken to hospital while I was down at uh, Point Lonsdale. Um, two weeks later, that same person rang and said she'd overdosed again. I went to the hotel room for that reason. I shouldn't have gone there. It was the damsel in distress situation. Wait a minute. He rang you up. She rang you up and said, I'm overdosing. Wouldn't she be overdosing? How would she make the phone call? Wouldn't you call triple zero straight away? Um, I actually, on the way to that hotel room, I don't know why, said to myself, this is a setup. You're, you're going down. But I was mentally in such a bad way for a variety of reasons that that compounded the whole whole travel or the journey to there mm. and it sounds silly but it's almost like i'm going here just neck me get it over and done with really mike didn't even question the fact that he just said she was overdosing he didn't bother calling the ambulance he thought well i can go down there maybe get laid right yeah if if in fact you someone did administer something to you that they shouldn't have when did that happen 
I believe it happened in the hotel room. I'm not going to go on about this, Mike, because I just don't feel it's appropriate to keep... Uh, so was someone else there or did she do it? It's like, oh, hey, Ricky, I'm overdosing. Want a drink? How about a scotch? Going on and on about it. It happened three years ago, but I will say this, is that I rang my brother, uh, one of my brothers, um, who's in the police force, and I said to him, I've been drunk. In the police force? His brother. So instead of investigating who the girl actually was in the first place, he's gone through all of this and let himself get put in this situation where it's destroyed his whole life. I've been drugged. And he said, get your ass out of there and get out of there now. And all I know was that I was found at some stage laying on the um, concourse outside Eddie Head Stadium. That's not... And, and what do you mean, get out of there now? Why didn't your brother help you? Why didn't, you, why didn't your brother come and pick you up? Reported. But weren't, did the Herald Sun story said that you were seen leaving that hotel room the next morning and getting into your car? It was three days later, not the next morning. Three days later. I'd come, my wife will verify I was at home. I went back to the hotel room because... Wait a minute. Wait, is there so much stuff getting left out here? What do you mean, like, you were home? Like, how did you get home? Like, did you contact your wife and say, hey, I'm just at this hotel room with this schoolgirl, can you come and get me? Like, how did he get from there to home and then back to his car again? Because my car was in the street. I berated a certain female in reception area. I then went to get in my car and, um, and was photographed getting into my car. You'd have to ask yourself the question, why was that person there taking photos of me unless they'd been rung? Is that a setup? Well, one of the answers to that question is because you are a mini celebrity in Australia at that time. So there's always people following you, right? Even today, people follow you as you walk to your apartment when you're involved in different scandals. You have to also ask yourself this question. Why would that person ring that certain female at two o'clock in the morning and ask to go and see it when you're in the presence of... So let's identify the some people here. You're talking about a journo ringing the St Kilda schoolgirl. Is yep, that what I we're am. talking about? Yep. Yeah. So do you think there was a conspiracy? Uh, well, I, I think the best thing to do is leave it up to the public to decide that. I, I really can't be bothered spending one... I love how Mike said the word conspiracy like it's some kind of Alex Jones thing. Black helicopters. The government. Like, it's not necessarily a conspiracy, it's just the news trying to get clicks and trying to get headlines and trying to get him being photographed doing dumb shit. It's not a conspiracy. We know they do that, Mike. One more second of okay. my life on it. Okay, okay. Tell me how you felt when you saw Mitch... All right, so that's pretty much all of that. There is a lot more to come on Ricky Nixon. I've still got three or four parts left on this. This is only the first part, but I don't want to make this into an hour video, so I'm going to do it in different parts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. This is basically just about the St Kilda schoolgirl incident and him wanting to jump off the bridge, but there's plenty more to come. So let me know what you think.